Hi everyone, I'm going to relate it over some words from the Dafyomi today from the daily Talmud. We are concentrating on the Gemara, is it Nesachet Nedarim? That is Daf Mem Zayin, that is page number 47 from the Gemara. And a very famous case is going to be expounded on in the Talmud today. Within regards to, say, a person, there's a father, or could be a very rich father, or one maybe not so rich, and he speaks within regards to his son. He specifically states that. He, with regards to the son that the son is not going to benefit from him in this world uh, in any shape or form he's not going to benefit at all so uh, say for example uh, the son uh, the father is going to uh, let's say he's going to pass away can he the son inherit the father at this stage in time because he's made this uh, vow this uh, neder that the son cannot benefit from him so when the father passed away, the son, according to the Gemara, it's Avimi that posed the question. Rabbi will say because the father will now be dead, it seems like the son will be able to inherit him at that stage in time because the vow which was made by the father was just exclusive within regards to while the father was living. However, if the father stipulates inside his nede, inside his vow, that the son is not going to benefit from him now or even when he passes away, Rava is going to answer this question of Avimi and say that it's going to be forbidden for the son to even benefit from him after he's passed away. So for example, within regards to the laws of inheritance, uh, benefiting might be an issue, the Talmud relates, because the, the father had stipulated that inside the Talmud, inside uh, the Gemara at that stage in time. However, there are people in the Shulchan Aruch, the Code of Jewish Law, that do say there are people that argue on this. And they say that actually, that according to Torah law, a child does a, uh, a benefit Yerusha, uh, an inheritance from the father naturally. However, we're talking about benefiting here. Can the son benefit from that or not? It seems that according to the Gemara, according to Rava, inside the Talmud, the son is not going to be able to benefit from that property. However, there are people that are arguing on this in the Talmud. And this is all coming from page number 47 in Masechet Nadarim. It's worth looking into it. There's other opinions within regards to it and delve into it deeper within regards to the different tractate. And it's all built on the Mishnah, which we learned yesterday within regards to uh, a person, as I stated before, Membav in the Mishnah, where someone speaks within regards to a property that he says, in, there's two different ways. He says that I forbid your, my property onto this property onto you or your property. There's a difference between the word this or your within regards to their property uh, 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 or, or my, let's just say. If he says, I forbid you onto my property, when the father's going to die in that case in time, because it's a my, it's, uh, he's going to be dead. So then the person's going to be uh, able to benefit from him. But if the father or someone is going to say, I forbid to the other person this property, even if the father or the person dies, that property for the person he's explicitly stated is forbidden forever because he's ex, ex, he's stated the exact place of the property and that will be a problem at that stage in time so that was all built on the mission on that and in today's the Talmud we learned within regards to a father uh, giving away bequeathing away his inheritance and w when he stipulates that he's not gonna give it to the son in this world while he's alive or wait that even including inheritance or not guys wish you a fantastic day and enjoy bye